I'm in the process of trying to learn overpaint and some of the urban fantasy techniques that the book cover guys do. I'm not an expert, I don't know what I'm doing, so I've got a true expert in today, Christian Bentalan, and he's going to show us a few things on how to overpaint hair in Photoshop. So Christian, in your kind of tutorial today, what exactly will you be covering? Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys the the basic fundamentals or on how how to do over, uh, overpainting uh, on the hair. So this one is very very basic, so that you can uh, you guys can follow it uh, easily. So it's more of an introduction to doing fantasy overpaint over stock images or three D assets. Is that right? Oh yeah, more like it. Okay, so what we're gonna it's, do? It's gonna be it's gonna be very basic. Actually. Oh yep. Oh, well, that's good for me because I need basic because I don't I have no idea what I'm doing and. For selfish reasons, <laughs> I wanted to learn. That's why I asked you to do this. And everybody watching will get to learn as well. So we're on to, let's get this to the beginning. Right. So we've started with a stock image, Christian. And oh, yes. that's, that's just a basic stock image. No background removed. And what's going on here? Okay. Uh, can you pause it in a minute? Oh, I can pause it any time yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I can explain it better. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, there's a trick uh, on how to do this. this uh, uh, mostly if you're doing a uh, painting on a, a black hair, especially black hair, because black hair is a bit very tricky. So what I had to do is turn up the expo uh, exposure value so okay. that you can see the some of the details on the hair so yeah you can play it now okie dokie so, so uh, that's an exposure it, adjustment layer and you use that to pull out the the details because the hair is really dark in the original stock image yeah yeah that, that uh, that's that's what i did that's the reason uh the reason that i did the exposure thing so okay. that i can see some, most of the details that's the cool. reason why is to know where to point, uh, where to paint the actual uh, strands, the actual uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant, like the, the actual strands. So where you uh, you're gonna be sure where to paint it. Okay, I do it's a similar help. thing, but I use a levels adjustment layer. If I'm compositing or cutting things out, I do a temporary levels, and then I pull all the details mm -hmm. out, and then hide and show it as I need it. So this is very similar. I'm actually familiar with this uh, process you've got mm -hmm. something you've got a smudge tool going on here what's all this about oh yeah uh for smudge tool especially for a fantasy or something uh what i what i've noticed in fantasy stuff most of the most of the details are smooth okay. so what i have to do is, is smooth it a little so instead of uh, using the gaussian blur blur how it should be done like okay because Gaussian is just just to make it blurry, but as much as you can make it like a, uh, you know, more like a painting effect or something okay, like that. Okay, I've, I've never ever ever done that before. I've I've been a, a person that uses Gaussian blur. So, <laughs> when with these paint strokes that you're doing here, are you using a tablet? Yeah, I've been using a. Actually. I started using a tablet and, and I upgraded to a Wacom Cintiq okay. HD monitor. So you can you've got a uh, Cintiq here. You tweak. I'm just going to bring that back a second, Christian, just to um, pause yeah, sure, it sure. on these brush settings for the guys um, and for me as well, because I'm learning. So shape dynamics, um, you've got transfer and build up. So you just started with a, a standard brush. Yeah, and you've got a, that uh, on pen pressure and then transfer and then um, this bit. What does build up do? Uh, I think it's the default uh, option of the Photoshop. Okay, so but that's not yet. that's not a setting that you put in place then. Yeah, but what's important is the shape dynamics. Okay, uh, so you, it tapers will, off into a sharp point. Yeah, into a sharp point, especially it's going to work to to paint a strand. On here okay i've actually yeah. since your last videos on this topic I've, I've tried doing it and you make it look a lot easier than what it actually is um i gave it a, <laughs> I, I gave it a little go and and failed 
um, but I'm going to keep doing it until I can do it. I'll keep practicing. I know, I know you can do it, bro. You're a legend. <laughs> well, not with this kind of stuff. Maybe in cutting out roller coasters, but um, <laughs> um, I, I've noticed on the brush settings up there, you had flow 60%. You like to use the airbrush setting. And can you just explain yeah. once again why you use the airbrush setting? Oh yeah, uh, I usually use the soft version of the of the brush. It sounds uh, hard edges, but most of the time uh, it should be smooth. It is soft so because, and stylized, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It makes the the cover. It makes the artwork more like the painting stuff. Yeah, more like which, that. which is what you're going for. You're you're going for uh, a stylized, half photographic, half painted aesthetic, and it's. It's a look very yeah, unique to the Urban Fantasy book cover style. You got it right, bro. Stylized, uh, uh, semi-realistic, semi-realism semi or something like that. Okay, yeah, so I, uh, these swatches that you did up the right here, what is this and why did you do it? For example, uh, if you can see here, it, it is a uh, semi-brown, light brown. So what I have to do is find the mid value of that color and paint on the top of it yep. it's the first one thing to do and then what i'm doing here now is i'm painting the highlights so what i had to do now is to find the higher value of the previous color so it's gonna it's gonna make the the hair more like a 3d uh looking something like that okay and more how like how do you sample those colors? So you've laid the colors down. What tool or um, shortcut do you use to grab those colors when you need them? Oh, uh, you're gonna have to do it manually. You're gonna have to uh, guess which uh, which color would uh, would work. Uh, as you can see here on my color but swatch. I, I mean, the... I mean, once you've put those three tones down next to the lady's mm -hmm. head, do you use the eyedropper tool? Do you use the alt? Oh yeah key how how do you take those tones when you need them that's that's what i'm asking oh yeah i'm sorry it's okay yeah. i usually use the eye drop and okay. then i'm so, gonna change so the color what do you do do you hit i on the keyboard sample the color then hit b for brush to cycle back to brush oh yeah i use hot kiss for brush it's b and then for for i think for the eye drop it's alt yeah it if is. you got brush active you can hold down alt and then it will switch over to the dropper tool so yeah that's oh, cool yeah. yeah you make this look so easy i actually tried this the other day and yeah i struggled um how long <laughs> how long did it take you to practice to learn how to make those hair strands look natural and fluid because you can do this oh. very very fast you make it look so easy and i've tried it i know it's not easy but this is the result oh, yeah. of years and years of repetition and practice, isn't it? That is true. Actually, I'm still learning. Yeah. Here is the most complicated part of my my studies. Until now, I, I can say I, I mastered it. I'm still learning on it. Oh, so absolutely, yeah. The tip that I uh, the tip that I ca that I can give to the viewers uh, before you start painting on hair, make sure the value is right. Make sure uh, to start on the, uh, on the right value, as what I've said. Uh, since it's black hair, you yep. should find the mid middle value of the color, and then once you you paint you paint it already on the top of it, now it's time to move on for the highlights. Now it's gonna make the hair and it, more. And it's a build up, more... isn't it? You got mid tones, then highlights, and I'm assuming is it a smaller brush size for catching those little lighter highlight tones on the hair? uh that it's not necessary as long as you find the uh you, you found the, the the right values everything will follow yeah this is as you uh... can see here yeah as you can see here now now since the i got the right values i can play with the size of the strands so that will because if the strands or if this if the strands are smaller or or larger but if the values are not right it's not gonna make it it's not gonna be right okay because i tried that one we use a smaller um brush for the details and you make it look easy <laughs> i tried it uh, <laughs> uh how long so i'm an absolute beginner i've never over painted hair before with practice 
how long do you think I'll be able to get fairly decent results and <laughs> kind of get something almost like what you do? To be honest, this kind of uh, stuff that I did, this basic fundamentals that I've shown you, yep. I think you're going to make it like in days, maybe one day or two, really? one to three days. It's, it, yeah, it's so, enough for you to understand the value. Once you understand the value, everything will follow. Okay. It's going to be easy for you. Because the, the strokes that you lay down, the mid-tones, the highlights and the details, they look natural. And I'm assuming there's a bit of muscle memory there because you've done this oh yeah you've done this hundreds if not thousands of times and it didn't come naturally to me um oh that's interesting i thought he was going to use divide then <laughs> so you did your color layer which is you painted on a new layer with um just a bog standard color tone and then you use yeah. hue saturation slider directly on the layer to get a color or tone so I'm assuming you didn't paint with the color that you wanted because you wanted the option to use the hue saturation to choose yeah. what color you wanted to see what looked yeah. nice. So, yeah, that's true. You, you get it right. So it's going to be better for me to to find the right color for the hair. So as yep. you can see also, uh, what I've mentioned a while ago, since I have the proper, uh, the right value, the mid-tones, the, the highlights, everything, uh, went uh went through or went went right even though i i painted the top color on it every every color will work okay yeah and i've noticed that your color layer is above the hair layers that you've done mid value yeah. highlights and details and the color is above all of them yeah so that it will be painted on top do you ever use the photoshop oil paint filter to lay down like a, a a base layer for hair or do you never bother with that uh to be honest i've been using oil, oil paint effect from photoshop uh for a long time but it, it is a case-to-case -case basis absolutely uh, yeah. uh whatever i mean whenever it suits the concept or whenever I feel of using it yep yeah it's case to case basis but yeah it, uh, it really helps also to smooth the the hair as you can see a while ago what i've done is the smudge instead of the oil, oil how how oil important was so we've actually come to the end of that recording that you've done for us christian mm -hmm. um how important is that smudge process that you've done at the beginning is that is that literally to knock out the details of the hair strands so it's not too photographic and sharp yeah you got it right again <laughs> you know you know the answer already yeah uh, the reason why I, I use smudge is to just to lower the if the, the the sharp the sharp effect of the of the photo yep. so that it, uh, it would be smoother and softer so it will actually uh when doing that it's gonna make the cover or the artwork more like a fantasy staff rather than the uh real photo okay sorry my pug's making weird noises in the background he's, he's dreaming and barking in his dream <laughs> uh, you how many dogs have you got christian <laughs> uh, i do have four yep so you know all about it then okay so from what you've shown me here today and what you've explained to me i'm going to have another go at this could we do a call like this where I'm doing the hair over painting and then you're telling me what to do? Would you would you be up for doing that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It seems fun. It yeah. Sounds kind of fun. Because I want to learn. <laughs> There's a few things I'm learning this year. I'm learning digital over paint, um, getting some okay results from that. I want to learn this hair fantasy style that you do. Um, I, I would just like to know how to do it and there's another massive thing that I would like you to teach me and we'll do a video mm -hmm. uh, for our channel for all the guys and that is rim lighting edge lighting um, that's one of the final final things I've got to get my head around it's one of the things I've always ignored <laughs> um, so that's what I want to do next okay Christian that was brilliant thank you so much for sharing your expertise with me and the guys and the viewers today and course, the next video what we'll do is you training me 
um, in real time on how to do that here. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Well, I appreciate you coming by today. I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.